Our special guest today, I am really honored that he is able and willing to join us. Wally P. is the author of Back to Basics, the Alcoholics Anonymous Beginners Meetings, and also How to Listen to God, Overcoming Addiction Through the Practice of Two-Way Prayer. Wally P. is the originator of the Back to Basics Beginners Meetings, which have grown to thousands of groups across the country and in other countries as well. Wally P. has himself taken over 10,000 people through the 12 steps. Wally himself, and has witnessed countless miracles of recovery. Wally P., welcome, and thank you for joining us on the Dr. Carroll program today. Thank you, Dr. Carroll. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to join you and uh, your listeners. I want to say, first of all, that I, with you, am grateful that God has brought you health. I know you had some health challenges. You're doing well. You're traveling again, and I'm really excited about that for you and also for the people that you're able to share this this good news with. Um, Wally, I know many people, and I'm sure many of our listeners, have heard about the 12-step programs, and many people have, have found a lot of benefits there, but there have also been some that have found that maybe the way they've experienced the 12 steps hasn't been completely successful. What do you think are some of the uh, things about the way the 12-step programs are usually practiced that well, may not really be as helpful as they should be. Well, in the early days of the uh, 12-step movement, uh, the steps uh, weren't an option. They were a necessity. Uh, This is what a newcomer did. In fact, in many uh, areas of the country, you could not go to a regular meeting until you had actually completed all 12 steps and uh, Back then, they handed out uh, what was called a sobriety card, and uh, it had two dates on it, the date that uh, you entered the 12-step community and the date you finished the steps, and, and typically that was done within a matter of a few weeks. Today, we have um, two schools, um, and, uh, and one is the fellowship of recovery, and the other is the program of recovery. And in terms of the fellowship, uh, many people here don't drink and go to meetings, 90 meetings in 90 days, and uh, things like that, uh, which are actually contrary to uh, what was actually practiced in the early days, which was, oh, and another one was meeting makers make it. Well, in the early days, uh, it wasn't meeting makers who made it, it was step takers who make it. And and that's what we're seeing is that people that are uh, getting reconnected with the steps, uh, getting reconnected with the original program, are are seeing the same success that they saw back in the 1940s and 1950s. And I'm I've just been blessed to uh, be a part of this movement. Uh, just wanted to. Uh, say as an aside that I make no money from the sale of any book uh, or literature that has my name on it. Uh, This is my 12-step work for which I cannot be paid. This is my gift to the recovery community, and what an honor it is to be able to give this away. Oh, thank you, Wally, for saying that and for sharing with us today. I want to let our listeners know that we have some links on our website, some articles that you have made available, and also links to the Back to Basics book that, that you have authored. Wally, talk about some of the parts of or what's different about the Back to Basics approach to the 12 steps that you have found has made the difference for people. I don't think it's a question of difference. It's a question of of reconnecting with what worked, uh, what uh, Bill W. and Dr. Bob and the pioneers put together uh, as a very simple and straightforward approach uh, to the steps. Uh, the big book was written uh, with the assumption that the steps would be taken in a matter of a few hours, and uh, and that's the way it was practiced in the early days. Uh, I am uh, again, blessed to thank you for commenting with good health, and I'm back on the road uh, uh, taking people through the steps. Uh, I, I do it uh, uh, on weekends uh, during a, uh, a day. We start at 9 o'clock in the morning on step one, and by 4.30 in the afternoon we've taken all 12 steps, including uh, a fifth step. We have a two-hour lunch break for take the fifth step, and then other groups are doing um, – 
a one-week version where you take uh, session one on Monday, session two on Tuesday, you do a fifth step on Wednesday, uh, session three on Thursday, and session four on Friday. And there's uh, over 6,000 groups now, uh, each meeting each week, uh, which are taking the steps in four one-hour sessions over the course of a month. Uh, such as every Wednesday night. Uh, last Monday I was in Lake Oswego, Oregon, and that was I was at their beginners meeting. Uh, Wednesday I was at the beginners meeting in Anacortes, Washington. Uh, next Wednesday I'm going to be at the beginners meeting, or one of the several beginners meetings in Vancouver, British Columbia, and then Thursday uh, we're going over to Vancouver Island and and see the beginners witness the beginners meetings there. Wow, that that is awesome. Now, Wally, you talk about taking people through these steps in a matter of hours or at most a a few weeks, that seems so revolutionary to people that may have been in recovery programs or 12-step programs for years and, oh, maybe now I'm on step five or working on step seven. It's it's a very different approach. What – is there any benefit to doing the 12 steps repeatedly? I I can imagine if you do it all – in, in a day or, or in a few weeks, there may still be other things that you have to, to learn, to grow into. Um, I'm, let me give you a quote from Bill W., co-founder of the first of the 12-step programs. And, uh, and he made this statement in 1951, speaking from the podium in Hollywood, California. And this is a quote. Don't make a project out of working the steps. Go through your day being the sort of person you'd like to be, trying to help someone else, and making sure you don't hurt anyone. And when you get to the end of your day, review the 12 steps, and you'll find that you have worked all of them. So the co-founder of the first of the 12-step programs was giving us the uh, statement uh, that uh, we're to take all 12 steps each and every day. And uh, and I do that. I, I do a surrender uh, each morning. I share with others throughout the day. I make amends quickly if I've harmed anyone. I forgive uh, people who may have harmed me. And uh, I, again, as part of my morning uh, quiet time, I listen to the indwelling spirit, and I write guidance, and I follow it to the best of my ability during the day and review it at night. And try to help somebody else, uh, at least at least one or two uh, each and every day. Um, and uh, when people would ask in the early days, "What step are you on?" Uh, the answer was all of them. I think that is a very I, wonderful approach. This becomes a way that you live every day. And as that that quote that you read, not getting bogged down at, at any one particular point. Well, it, you mentioned something that I want to hopefully have you elaborate on a little bit, and that's, you mentioned surrender. I know that is a word that's regularly talked about. Another word is powerless in the, in the first three steps. Um, I know also that some people I have been aware of who are in 12-step programs or, or trying to overcome an addiction will say, oh, I'm just praying and asking God to take care of this for me. Talk about how relying on God or surrender to God and, and that thought, uh, how do you connect that with the need to take action and, and do something on your part? How, how do you work all that out? Well, the surrender is is essential, uh, and that is really the, the heart and soul of the uh, beginning of the journey or the beginning of each day is to acknowledge that we can't do this alone. Uh, this is a we program. Uh, we read the big book together, we take the steps together, and we recover together. So part of that we program includes the God of our understanding. Um, some people call it uh, spirit or the indwelling spirit. Um, many, many different names uh, for this power. Greater than human power that resides inside each and every one of us. So that's the key is that it is an inner journey. It's a journey uh, to determine uh, which course to take each and every day by by listening and, and receiving uh, 
guidance, and we typically take action on guidance that passes uh, the test of forgiveness and and faith or love and uh, unselfishness and honesty, and uh, and and hopefully we don't take action on anything that we receive that um, has to do with resentment or fear or selfishness or dishonesty. So we have a test to separate. Um, what the pioneers called uh, self-will from God's will. And I use a little 2012 version of it uh, when I'm taking people through the work, especially in large groups. Uh, I talk about the voice of addiction versus the voice of recovery. And can you tell the difference between the two voices? Well, the pioneers gave us a test to separate those two voices, and uh, and hopefully uh, – we're able to learn from this. Uh, that's why we have sharing partners, because we may think it passes the test. And uh, our sharing partners or sponsors or spiritual guides uh, uh, may think otherwise. And, and it's a topic that we open up for discussion. We do have a caller, Wally. Would you be, oh. uh, would you be willing to, to talk to one of our callers for a moment? Oh, absolutely. I had a question for you, Wally. It all sounds... Uh... You know, I, I appreciate the fact that you're going back to the sort of back to the basics, right? Or back to the the, the founders' intents for the program. And uh, I, I agree that a lot of things have happened over the years. What particularly interests me is the fact that you have been discussing going through the steps in such rapid fashion. I agree that can sometimes drag on unnecessarily, and people hem and haw. But my uh, question re- revolves around the action steps four, five, eight, and nine, and how you achieve that, or you know, how do you do those in such a quick manner and do them thoroughly enough that, that they're so critical to do completely? Uh, I'm sure you understand what I mean. How do you address that so quickly? Oh, excellent question, Jason. Um, let me talk about the. Uh, that uh, particular part of the program in terms of a concept that's relatively new. It's not a concept uh, uh, from the uh, 40s or 50s, but one that I particularly uh, enjoy in terms of visualization is that uh, uh, we peel the onion. That's why we take the steps again and again and again and again. And the, and the key is to uh, get through uh, that process in one sitting. Uh, the sponsor and the newcomer sit down together, and the sponsor asks the questions, and the newcomer does the talking, and the sponsor uh, actually writes the four-step. I know this this sounds like heresy to some people today, but <laughs> this is the way it was done. And uh, as an archivist historian for the 12-step community and, and having had open access to every archival collection in the United States and Canada and interviewing more than 200, 300 people uh, that got sober in the 1940s. I am passing on their message and not mine, um, that it was done in one sitting. And then uh, you talk about it, and then you come up with an amends list, and then you role-play the amends. And uh, and part of the amends was uh, the concept that the uh, sponsor was the first person the newcomer saw after an amends was made, uh, either in person or over the telephone. And uh, um, But the whole uh, process of doing this in one sitting is part of the uh, way of looking at the steps as a continuum rather than as 12 distinct and and separate entities, uh, a continuum Wally, of process. Wally, I, I'm sorry we are running a little close to our break. Are you able to perhaps hold on for a few minutes? I love this discussion, and if you're able, Certainly. maybe we could just have you hold on for a few minutes after our break? I would be honored. Our very special guest today, Wally P., is the author of Back to Basics, the Alcoholics Anonymous Beginners Meetings, and also... How to Listen to God, Overcoming Addiction Through the Practice of Two-Way Prayer. Wally has taken over 10,000 people through the 12 steps of recovery over very short periods of time. And we've been talking with Wally about the back-to-basics approach. And Jason, calling while uh, driving his truck through Kentucky, was asking Wally about the action steps, uh, the four particular action steps in the 12-step programs. And taking those very, very quickly. And I, I think, Wally, you gave a very good very good synopsis of answering that. You need to at least get a certain level 
through those action steps quickly, even though you may have to come back and do more later. Am I right there? Oh, yes. And let me clarify uh, for Jason and the uh, rest of the listeners that um, back to basics, uh, we describe it in terms of the tourniquet. And uh, I found it ironic that today is the, uh, uh, on this date, the Band-Aid was invented. Uh, that's another <laughs> way of looking at uh, at these beginners meetings uh, and, the, and the back to basics approach. And the example would be uh, a hospital. If you go to the hospital and you're, and you have a knife wound, uh, and you're ble- bleeding profusely, uh, the doctor doesn't hand you a book and send you home and tell you to read it. He puts on, he or she puts on the tourniquet. And then moves on to the next emergency patient. And then another person will come along and, and, uh, suture up the wound and, and possibly a third person come along and, and put on, uh, the bandage and uh, give you a shot of antibiotics and send you home. Back to basics is just the tourniquet. This is just to keep you alive long enough so that you can take the steps in more depth and detail again and again and again and again and get deeper into those layers of the onion. If you don't put the tourniquet on, you're not going to be alive long enough to take the steps in more depth and detail. Does that help, Jason? Yes, that's a great answer. Thank you, Ollie. Um, as you said, there's there's a whole lot. I've heard that expression myself in the rooms a number of times, of course, and it's a very good uh, analogy for the process of, of undoing uh, so many years of, uh, of having lived with this illness and all the destructive events that have happened in your life. So uh, that's um, I appreciate the time today. Thank you for having me on, and uh, it was great to talk to you both. And thank you, Ollie. Wally, another question that I, I hope you can address it, your book, How to Hear from God, the, the two-way prayer, and I know yeah. you, you've alluded to that a couple times. Just briefly share what that whole practice is about. Uh, this practice uh, has been around for centuries and centuries. It, it's not unique to uh, the 12-step community, um, though our 11th step makes it crystal clear as to what we are to do in terms of action. It says, uh, sought through prayer and meditation. Prayer is talking to God, talking to the indwelling spirit, uh, typically in prayer. Uh, but the second half of it is listening for the answers. It's um, it, it's a two-way communication because uh, as a result of becoming a listener, and that's what many of the pioneers consider the steps all about, steps one through ten, were to remove the blocks that prevent us from becoming effective listeners. Step 11 teaches us how to listen. In step 12, we let God do the talking as we work with others. So it it is about listening, and it is about being guided in terms of messages that we receive, either through sight or sound or sensation or uh, or knowing. Those are the four channels that that Bill described on page 14 of the big book, sight, sound, sensation, and knowing. And then further on in the big book, it talks about an, uh, inspiration, intuitive thought, or a decision is how, how the Spirit will uh, talk to us through inspiration, intuitive thought, or a decision. And we have to be careful with the decisions because it could be a, a yes or no, but keep in mind that weight is a decision. And uh, and be careful right. with the fourth one. If you insist, uh, if you insist on taking your will back, uh, guess what? We get it back, and then we're off to the races, and uh, uh, usually with very negative consequences. So uh, it's a it's a powerful tool. Uh, there are eleven step guidance meetings that have sprung up all over the country and around the world where people actually use this as a meeting format. Uh, it was a meeting format in the early days of the recovery movement. Uh, started in Dr. Bob's living room in the summer of 1935. Bill and Bob both practiced it on a daily basis. Um, and it, uh, again, uh, has become a lost piece of our history that's now being uh, rediscovered and, uh, and reemphasized. 
I want to let our listeners know that you have made some articles available that we have put links to on our website. I was really touched by one of them. You had a large number of quotes from people who have experienced the the Back to Basics beginners meetings, some who were beginners, but some who continue to include that approach in their in their daily life of of, of living healthy and, and recovery. I, I have to say I was I was rather touched by, by some of those letters and and, and stories of people who have really uh, really found healing and, and recovery in this approach. Uh, I I imagine you hear that a lot, Wally. Oh, I, I am so blessed, Dr. Carroll, um, to uh, receive uh, all of this very, very positive feedback, uh, and not just from the people that I've taken through the steps personally, but the thousands of people that are conducting the meetings and, and the more than 500,000 people that have been through the work uh, and uh, also uh, how the work has been incorporated into other 12-step programs uh, other than the original uh, uh, basic recovery for food addiction and basic recovery for sex addiction. And the General Service Office in New York has asked us to reserve back to basics uh, for the first of the 12-step programs having to do with alcohol. It is uh, equally applicable to other addictions and other obsessive compulsive behaviors and uh, and I, I received the emails, I received the telephone calls. I just got a phone call earlier this week from a man who was returning to Russia. He uh, he started Back to Basics in St. Petersburg and had Back to Basics translated into Russian and then he took it to Moscow, uh, came back to the United States uh, for a few months to basically unpack and repack and, and now he's going back to Russia to plant more uh, beginners meetings in, in other uh, cities in Russia. And the book has been translated into Chinese and Japanese. Polish and Norwegian, German and Spanish, and uh, all of this is done for fun and for free. Uh, uh, no money ever changes hands, and uh, I get to witness the miracles because uh, uh, somehow or other they uh, they find the the time and a and a phone number and give me a call. It's uh, just a, just an awesome to hear the, about their miracles. Well, Wally, I I, I want to say God bless you. Keep spreading the message. You know, you have really touched my heart and, and I know our listeners. I appreciate you taking some of your weekend time from your spending some time with your family to be with us today. We're really pleased and honored and go with God. Oh, you too. And, uh, as, uh, Dr. Bob and Bill used to say, uh, keep it simple and pass it on. Keep it simple and pass it on. Thank you, Wally. And we'll have to stay in touch. Thank Bye-bye you, Dr. Now. Carol.